What's up, guys? It's me, Alexander Jarvis from 50 Folds and the blog alexanderjarvis.com. Now, today, I'm going to take you through something fancy I've just made for you guys. And it's also incredibly boring, but important. It's how to make your cap table. Now, you're probably thinking, if you don't know much about this stuff, why do I need a cap table? Well, to be honest, it's actually pretty simple. A cap table explains who owns what of your company, and you need to keep track of it. From your perspective, you've got a four-step plan. You want to start up, cash in, sell out, then bro down. But if you want to sell out, how much do you actually own when you sell out? Maybe you don't care. It's going to be loads of money, right? Well, I can tell you, don't give a shit if you don't care. If you want to raise money from investors, they really, really care. In fact, it's the only thing that they care about. So you're going to have to keep track of this stuff. And you're thinking, oh, whatever, I have lawyers. But do you really want to be spending 600 bucks an hour paying lawyers? No, me neither. And also, investors expect you to know your cap table. Otherwise, you look like a total tool and a total noob. So you need to have a cap table. Now, let me... Take you back in time to 2015, or something along those lines. I was probably just like you. Knew something about something, but very little about this super boring, nerdy topic called cap tables. I went looking around the net to try and find something which would just do it for me and frankly teach me everything that I needed to know without putting um, basically any effort in. Unfortunately, everything I found kind of sucked. I mean, everything, well, you know, people make some things, but they're just so basic, they're not really useful. They, you know, they're just useful enough to think that they are, they're just, they're not what you want. So I said, screw it. The best way to learn is just to do things yourself and try them out. So I nodded out for a while. I made a fairly handy tool. It's called the Ultimate uh, Cap Table and Returns Analysis. It's been downloaded thousands and thousands of times. It gets downloaded, I don't know, like 200 times a week on my blog still and some other sites. It's pretty decent, but you know, the problem is it's a little bit too much fill in the blanks. So when you're like me and you don't really know what you're doing, it's pretty useful because there's, there's limited flexibility in it. But uh, last week, a founder pinged me and uh, as feedback said, look, it's great, but there's very little in the way of training and it's a little bit hard to figure out. So welcome to 2017. Well, pretty much just about to get to 2018. It's the day before New Year's Eve, guys. Look who the big nerd is. So I, I spent six weeks building a new cap table from scratch. I basically threw out everything I did before and tried to totally reimagine what cap tables look like. And what I made is the pro cap table and returns analysis, which is up on my site. And so when, you know, this guy pinged me and was saying, you know, it's a bit hard to use, not much in training. I sat down and I opened up the old spreadsheet and I started going through it and trying to make some updates, adding some more functionality in the areas of like the convertible notes. I just said, you know what, sod this. Why don't I just take my state of the art, simplify it a bit and just give it to you guys for free. And so that's what I did. Now I've done a whole lot to this model and it's basically completely different to the one that you would have seen before. Um, let me explain some of the things that I've done. Now, firstly, you can in this model just do an angel through convertible note, you can do a seed round, and you can do your series A. And that's going to cover the vast majority of people because let's face it, most people are dead after the series A anyway. So why do you need to have a bigger bloated spreadsheet that you may or may not want? Yes, there are really good reasons why you want to have a bigger one, but that's why there's the pro version of this. This one is just for what the vast majority of people might need. Okay. Now the biggest thing about this and which I've never seen anyone else do before is there is a ledger system. I treat every class of share, whether it's your common, your options, your seed, your series A, as an independent sheet. So those changes get added incrementally in. So you could say, you know, we hire Alex 
he gets X options. And then you issue him new options. So you would add that in a new line. And then let's say he exercises some. So you get rid of them. And the ESOP pool converts into common shares. You add an Alex into the common ledger and deduct them out of his ESOP in the ESOP sheet. Or your convertible notes. There's a convertible note sheet. And when they convert, you can choose when. Is it seed, series A. And then they get added into the seed or series A, and they have shares in that class of share. And if they sell or they transfer shares, again, there's a ledger where you just keep adding lines. And something a lot of people didn't like about the old model was it was quite restrictive as to how many shareholders you could have in it. All right, it worked fine so long as you work within the constraints I've given you. No more with this. You can add as many shareholders as Excel has lines, which is something in the region of 1.6 million which you're not going to have for uh, very logical reasons, but also legal reasons. Anyway, that's the ledger. Now, automation. I did quite a number of cool things in the original free version <coughs> from 2015, but there was still quite a lot that wasn't in that. For example, I don't think you had caps that were just discounts on notes. That's changed. Everything that you can possibly imagine to happen with convertible notes has been done for you. Do you know, for example, there are three ways that a note can convert? Well, I do, and I've done the math for you, so you don't have to figure it out. You just need to know which method you need to use. If you want to have acceleration of vesting, if you want to have one of three different vesting programs for your shares, math has already been done for you. And by the way, some of the math you can't even find on the internet because I had to figure it out because I know. Basically, everywhere where I could figure out an automation for you or do the formulas for you, that has been done. And that, I think, is pretty awesome. Now, what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a quick overview of the sheet. I'm going to allude to some stuff which is going to warp your fragile little mind and just make you think, holy fuck, this is just way too much. But you can use this model in the noob version and add in the basic details. But if you need to do really complicated stuff, the model will enable you to be able to do that too. Okay, so don't get too freaked out. You can make this as simple or as complicated as you want. Okay, so there are two sheets that are going to come with this free model. One is an example and one is a blank. We're going to run through the example sheet now. So when you pull it up, it'll say example in version one of this free model. If you want to get more free stuff, just click on one of the links. It'll pop up in your browser and yay, more free stuff. Cool, right? Now, digging in, the, first, the next sheet that will come out of here is a format sheet. You don't have to touch anything here at all. I've mainly set things out so that you understand sort of what's going on here. These yellow boxes act as drop down menus throughout the model. So the vesting schedules that I mentioned, the accelerated vesting, yes or no, the different types of ESOP, your conversion methods, they're all mapped out here. And you can read a little bit of a note there to understand what's going on. So you don't have to do anything. You can change the names if you want. I just haven't tested what happens if you start changing everything. So I recommend that you just don't unless you kind of understand how Excel works and don't mind fiddling around. Now, this sheet is important. I do recommend you fill it out properly. But if you're really lazy, they said, the one thing you have to do is fill in option uh, column B, which is the shareholder name. Now, this took me a long time to figure out of how could I create stability and consistency throughout the whole cap table. And that is by having one system of record for all the shareholders. So once you input the shareholder name in this sheet, every other sheet will pull from it. And there's some complicated and hidden stuff I have over here, which makes this a little bit easier. But you have to add the names in this sheet in column B if you want to be able to use them in any other sheet, okay? Have to. And you know, you can type in whatever the shareholder types when you know they got their shares or around closed here. If you are, you know, acting like a bit of a registrar, you want to send updates, you can input shareholders' addresses, their email, so you can just copy paste that into your client and send them out as an update. And then, you know, when you do around, you can insert all the key details so that you don't have to go looking in the shareholder docs, right? We can ask your lawyer for the summary. So they got 
you know, your Series A guys have got liquidation preferences one times, so they've got a board of service seat, and they are a main investor with Parada rights. And you can use that as a basis to make sure you fill in the rest of the sheets properly. Okay, nice and simple. So this acts as your reference point. Now, calculations, you literally don't have to fill in anything in this sheet. You don't even look at it if you don't want to. All the math has been laid out for you. So here at the terms, it sets out your seed and your series A, and you can see exactly what happened. What your pre-money, your cash investments, the value of a converted convertible note looks like, um, what the effect was on your ESOPs, option pool bumps, the conversion method which happened for your convertible note, the prices for shares, and we have checks. Now, if there is a big number here in the checks, you fucked up something. If there's a tiny little number like minus one, don't worry, that's totally cool. It's just to do with fractionization of shares. So if someone invests a million and the share price is a little bit slightly off, then maybe, you know, they need to invest a million dollars and six to get the actual share amount. So you just need to deal with, um, uh, deal with that at the point of time when it happens to you, okay? Um, and then we can see what the rounds look like the day immediately prior to you close and what happens after the round. So look, prior, diluted. These are used for calculations. These are just used so you understand what the ownership position is by each class of stock. Um, now, cap tables. You can see here we've got common, seed, and series A ledger. What these do, you see here, this is one day prior to your seed. So this, if you haven't done a seed round, will basically be your current situation. The day you close your seed round, the day before, this will show you what, what your cap table looked like. Then this will show you what your seed round looked like, and then make your series A. It's super easy to fill out. You just use drop down menus. Remember, I told you how to fill in column B in the shareholder sheet. So you just pick someone in, I know, whatever, Sheryl Sandberg, Daniel Page, and boom, psh, everything like magic fills in. Okay, you do the same thing. So here we have founder and we have um, uh, other, you know, employees of the company. So you can see that. Me, Nicholas, and Cheryl have got common. Well, actually, Nicholas and Cheryl have got restricted stock, but let's not get into it. Uh, and the rest of the guys got options. So the difference between your outstanding stock and fully diluted are the options. You would normally include warrants in this, and the pro cap table version does have warrants in it. Just this one doesn't to make it simpler. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have your reserved options, which is zero because we're going to spend them all. Um, and we have a plug which we're not going to get into now. But if you just want to see what the future looks like without having to fill in each sheet, you can go into this the next sheet, the assumption sheet, type in a number, and it will basically tell you how much was being round and uh, what the dilution effect is going to be there. This is more relevant, again, in the ProCap table where we have from you know C to Series I. So you can see like nine different impacts of dilution over you know the lifetime of your startup. Um, okay, so if you want to add in, so at our seed stage, right, we've got two angel guys and we've got two seed dudes. So Hiranuj and Chireyu are coming in the seed round. They both invested, what, like 100k each. Best and Andreessen come in and you see, they fit in the seed. On the Series A, we only need to keep in your investors on the on the, on the the cap table once here. Best and Andreessen are in both the seed and the Series A, okay? And we employed... Two more people, so we pop them down here and they have some options too. Okay, now let's look at the assumption sheet. Okay, uh, the current date shows you what the current date is today. If you want to mess around this and look into the future, you can type in a date in the future because the model is all time dependent. And that was not freaking easy to figure out how to do either. So, literally, you type in the date every time something happened and you can pick the dates that you want to see up to that point in time. But otherwise, leave this as it is. So if you want to start filling this in, how much do the founding um, share, uh, shareholders have? What's the size of the initial ESOP? And that's the total number of shares you started out with. To add in the new rounds, you just type in seed, series A. You did a uh, investments of one, two million, pre-money at three and eight. When did the round close? 
Now, you can pick what your convertible note method is. Pre-money, uh, percentage ownership, and dollars invested method. If you don't understand this, I have a monster blog called um, a Convertible Note uh, Issues, which will cost you big or something like that. Don't worry, it's on my blog. You can easily find it. And that'll explain this in a hell of a lot of detail. For ESOPs, all right, investor says to you, I want you to have a 10% ESOP post my investment. You're like, oh, fuck, how do I calculate that? In this model, it's incredibly easy. You just type it in here. So you thought it was going to be 15, but you negotiated with a hiring plan less. Boom, it is now 10%. So your ESOP increase only had to be 3.2% instead of the 88 that you thought that you needed, which is great for you because you're getting diluted less. But there you go. Super easy to do things that are going to happen really commonly in your funding rounds. Now, let's look at the funding rounds before we look at the ESOP and the common shareholders. So with the convertible notes, everything is that you need to know is pulled out for you, which can help automate the inputting. We know that um, Anuj and Chereo were the two angel guys. Again, you just pick them from the drop down menu to add them in. Um, when did the note close? What's the maturity date? This will tell you how long the maturity date is a month. They invested how much principal? What was the interest rate? Now before in the last, uh, the original model, there weren't caps. Here there are. So you just type in what the cap was, say 5 million, and what the discount rate is. Now one thing, which is a little bit of a pain in the ass if you don't know how to do it, is since convertible note holders can decide whether or not they're going to take the discount or a cap if they have both those terms. You have to figure out which number they're going to take. And that depends on the value of the round at the qualified financing node. If you don't want to deal with the math, that's cool. I did it for you. So this tells you what the effective discount rate is, is and that will calculate the conversion price for you. No more thinking. Yay. You can see how many shares that they have for the principal and the interest. So if they don't have interest, they don't get any extra shares because of it. Cool, right? And then, you know, for posterity, you can input some comments here. You can keep track of what's going on. It just depends on how nerdy you want to be. Now, the seed and the series A are basically, well, not basically, they are exactly structured the same. But the only difference we're going to see here is our convertible note holders have converted at the seed round. So Anuj and Chereyu, again, you can see them here. That's where the shares are coming in. And this has happened because it was an options exercise where their convertible note converted into the seed series stock. Whereas Bessemer and Andreessen are an original issuance because they bought in at this round. Here, so I've done some nice fancy formatting. So, you know, if you want to issue certs to people, again, legal, boring stuff, you can. So these guys invested uh, 1 million total. Check adds up because in our assumption sheet that we said the round was going to be $1 million investment. So I have made sure that with double entry, you don't mess things up. But simply put in how much they have. The model tells you um, how many shares they're going to have. And then you can fill in all this nerdy stuff uh, and make changes if you want to, but I'm not going to get into them because they'll freak you out. Again, you can go as complicated as you want with this model. Now let's look at the Series A. We have um, Bestimer and Andreessen are back in the game again. They're investing $2 million. The checks are right. There is no convertible note converting at this round. And you can see how many shares they have. Again, it's another original issuance, the price per share, and then more nerdy stuff at the end. Okay, so that is your financing round. Let's look at your options and your common stock. So here, we're inputting all the employees in just by using the drop-down menus again, which are all in orange. So it's super easy to add new people in. You add in the date that they're joining. I've added levels of nerdiness here to make sure that you have a board meeting to prove them and that the vesting date will be the board date. You just type in the options that they have the type of stock that they have, if you want to get into this level of nerd. If you don't, just type in ISO and forget about the RS or restricted stock. And you can set their vesting schedule. What is their vesting schedule? A, B, C. They can have monthly, quarterly, or no cliff. 
uh, you can have accelerated vesting or not by just clicking a drop down menu. Um, now, if you want to get into a level of nerdiness, you probably don't want to, but it's also known as reality, then you can have restricted stock in your options exercise. You can cancel them. You can deal with expired options, which basically mean that you have 30 days upon um, uh, cancelling or expiring shares to, sorry, cancelling shares or uh, to convert them or purchase them, basically, otherwise they expire. It's some shitty tax stuff, especially like in America, but it's just reality, right? Um, and then we have a whole series of calculations which will tell you how many shares they've actually been investing at different points in time, okay? Uh, so if you want to get your nerd on, do different types of analysis and see what the effect is of accelerated uh, accelerated vesting, there you go, okay? Now, I'm gonna, before I deal with something you probably don't want to know about, <laughs> let's just look at the common stock ledger, okay? So here, again, easily add people into this. When they're getting uh, their shares issued, how many shares that they're actually having, basis of issuance, and you can type in their price per share. Simples. If you want to add people in, as I told you, it's actually really simple, right? Sorry, I hate Mac. Um, you know, boom. You've just expanded the ledger. It's the amazing thing about the way I've structured the ledger system. Um, so you can add in as many people as you want just by keep on adding in the rows. And I've designed the formulas, the summary formulas, to act in such a way as you can kind of mess around with it. Now... Okay, so there's some real complicated stuff in actuality that happens, okay? So you can issue your staff restricted stock, um, ISOs, NSOs, if you're in America, right? Depending on what the optimum tax structuring is for you, okay? So maybe you're doing restricted stock really early on for certain types of employees. Now, your restricted stock gets issued out of your ESOP. So we can see Nicholas Enstrom here. Um, is getting 50,000 options, which I think is something like 4% of the company, okay? And his type is restricted stock, which you need to use in the drop-down menu. Um, and he, we're transferring all these from the ESOP into um, the common ledger. We need to put them in this ledger too, so that the model knows that we're taking it out of the ESOP pool as to what is remaining to be able to be issued, okay? And then you see that we have added Nicholas into here as restricted stock with 50,000. Um, and that means that his restricted stock are in the common ledger. So restricted stock is basically common shares with a clawback. Again, it comes out of the ESOP pool because that's where you're basically, you know, deleting them on your, on your share schedule, okay? Now, he was a naughty boy. I don't know why, okay? I'm just putting it. So we, take, we took 5,000 of his restricted stock off him. And we also then have a line item uh, here. So you see 5,000, 50,000 less 5,000 is uh, the amount outstanding, right? And he's cancelled 5,000 bucks here. So you can do all this kind of really complicated stuff if you want to. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I'm going to be totally real with you. I don't know how all the stuff works to the nth degree. And frankly, I don't really want to know either. But... If you are a turbo node and you tur nerd and you know how all of this stuff works, you can use it. And please ping me an email. There are still things which I don't understand yet. I, I would I would be interested in, but let's face it. I mean, how much stuff do you really want to know about this? Okay, guys, that's a quick overview of this new cap table for you. In the next video, I'm gonna get the blank version open and I'm going to take you through step by step filling out a basic cap table so you actually know how to do this. Does that sound fun? <laughs> Maybe it's not fun, you just think, okay, I may as well learn because no one else is gonna teach me. Either way, I'm waiting for you in the next video, guys. Bye.